Let's continue our tour of Windows 7 by looking at Personal Folders. Now, if you are not familiar with the concept of files and folders, you should watch PC Basics Tutorial 6, which provides a beginner's introduction to how files are organised on your PC. So, let's open up our Personal Documents folder. Your Documents folder is where most of your pictures, documents and other files will be stored by default. To access it, open the Start menu and click on your name at the top here. Let's resize this window a little bit. OK, this is a typical Documents folder. From here, we can jump to several folders including our Downloads folder. This is where the files you download from the web are usually stored. Then there's My Documents, My Music, My Pictures and My Videos. These folders should be familiar to those of you who've used Windows before. There's also a folder for Saved Games. That's intended for computer game companies to put save game data inside so that you can easily back it up and a folder for saved searches. The layout should be familiar to Windows Vista users, though it might seem a little alien to Windows XP users. When you open your personal folders, or any folder on your computer, you'll be using Windows Explorer to navigate around them. So, let's take a look at the Windows Explorer window now. Firstly, we have the back and forward controls here then an address bar here. This can be used to see the file path or address. Then, as with Windows Vista, there's the built-in search tool here. Below that, we have a toolbar. This is a context-sensitive toolbar, which means it changes depending on the type of file or folder we are working with. Let me give you an example. I'll open up my music folder by double clicking on it. See how the toolbar has now changed? I can play all music in this folder, though actually there's only one song at the moment, and if I click the song once with my mouse, the toolbar changes again. I can now play the individual song. OK, let's go back to the previous directory. Click this back button here. You can also use the forward button if you decide that you didn't really want to go back yet. You can also jump quickly to other folders along the path or address by using these controls here. So let's jump straight to my pictures. Click the arrow here and choose my pictures. In the pictures folder we can see some of my photographs. Here I want to demonstrate the different views we can have in a folder. If we come to the icon over here and click, you'll see that the view is changed. Let's click the arrow here which shows us all the available views. Now change views by moving this slider here. Quite self-explanatory, we have extra large, large, medium and small icons. You can also view items as a list, as tiles, or this new view, content, which strikes a good balance between icon view and details view. You may have noticed that I skipped over Details View. Now, Details View is the view that power users use most often, so let's go to that now. Details View lets you get down to the nitty gritty of the files. We can see the date they were modified, the type of files they are, the size, and if we scroll across with this bar, the date that they were created. We can also view any tags that might have been applied to the files, 
but we'll cover tags in another tutorial. Now, if we come to any column and right click on it, we can add and remove columns by ticking or checking them. So, for example, if I wasn't interested in the date here, I could click it to deselect it, and now the column is gone. Let's see what other data we can see about a file. Let's right click on a column and choose more. I can now choose from hundreds of different types of metadata. Now of course some files will not have all this data available. For example, a picture isn't generally going to have an album artist. So if I ticked or checked that box and then pressed OK, the column would just come up blank. OK, I can also sort the data by any of these columns simply by clicking on them. So for example, to sort by size, click here. To reverse the sorting order, i.e. to sort from high to low, click here again. Just one or two things left to show you now. Clicking this button here brings up a preview pane. With this pane open, I single click on a picture or video and I get a preview picture of it here. There are also various shortcuts arranged along the left. Your favourite folders appear at the top here. By default, there's only three folders in here, but you can add a folder at any time by right-clicking here and choosing Add Current Location to Favourites. The other shortcut will take you to your Libraries folder, which we cover in a separate tutorial, the Home Group folder, which are shared folders on your network, again which we'll cover in another tutorial, and finally there are shortcuts to the computer which lets you explore all the drives attached to your computer and if your computer's on a network you can browse the network by using this shortcut here. That concludes this whirlwind introductionary tour to personal folders on Windows 7.